it's been a little while since I've done <laughs> a drawing video and that's partly because I have been working on this uh, Pandora project you may have been following my Kickstarter and um, which was successful thank you very much everybody who supported me and um, so I have been First of all, well, after the Kickstarter, Kickstarter is quite a strenuous kind of operation. <laughs> so uh, I fixed it so that that would finish so I'd have a week off. And then, um, well, let me, here's one. And then, uh, and then I've been working at it and oh my goodness, the amount of things that have been happening in my life that are kind of <laughs> crowding in on me. <clears throat> so, um, so I've been working away as best I can there's so many interruptions you can never tell when you start on a project what the interruptions are going to be sometimes you just have all the time in the world and sometimes the world crowds in on you so um here we are this is pandora and this is well you can tell she's opening the box don't do it so uh, what are we going to do here i'm going to paint it so i've drawn this um, so what are we doing here so I've kind of um, so this is going to be this is a very rough layout of what the page is going to look like so I know what that's going to be and so I kind of basically I've put another piece of paper over the top and I kind of traced it a bit better and then I put this over the top of this and traced it and kind of improving and smoothing and getting it uh, more and more correct as it goes along um, and this is all drawn with um, and this is now all drawn with polychromos um, this is all now drawn with a polychromos grey V <laughs> warm grey so this is at a bit of a weird angle here because I've got the board at an angle. Um, whereas normally I drew these drawings flat on the table, but this is kind of, <laughs> this is a job rather than a drawing I'm doing for YouTube. And, uh, ah, you see, so there we go. You have to be careful. So I'll just dab that off. So I've been finding there's a kind of a pattern to how I've been painting Pandora. And I think when you're illustrating a book, then you've got, you're kind of doing the same thing. I think in fact, that's what a lot of people find really, really difficult is they can draw a character <laughs> and create a character or whatever. And, but to draw them on every single page so you can still recognize them and that, that they're the same person and to draw them from different angles um that's that's not easy and that's i don't know i mean i i would call it a trick really <laughs> and it's something that you learn just by practice 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 and well i've been doing children's books and drawing characters and illustrating for well mm, 30 something years now <laughs> so i've got a lot of experience at it and here now i'm just gonna kind of Paint this kind of whooshy whooshiness into the edge. And so there's a kind of a. Um, so here I'm using. So here I'm using Naples yellow. And this is kind of matching up with the wall in the background of the, the room that she's in, which has been kind of featuring and so now I've got the basic wash in and so I want to make it darker around behind where she is and in fact there's kind of be a little flickering light in front so I'm going to want to have it kind of slightly shadowy up at the top so I'm now going to add in a bit of ochre and I think maybe it's time to start adding in a little bit of something darker. And this isn't a colour, this is just a mush, 
of um, kind of it's just this kind of mush that's on the top here which I'm just kind of adding in so it's not any particular colour and this is going to be a kind of a um, shadow ishness on the wall and it's going to be coming in there and kind of down there and it's also going to be on this side is this planned or what is going on here I think some people probably plan their things <laughs> in intensely I think with watercolor you need a certain amount of planning and I suppose I've planned this in my head and I thought I need to do this I need to do that I'm going to need to do this I'm going to need to do that and so I suppose this is where experience is coming in and um, so I want this this is also it's got a kind of a it's an old kind of flaky kind of plaster wall so I don't want it it needs a bit of texture I suppose is what I'm trying to say and so that's sort of coming around like that there we are good I'm happy with that at the moment so that's kind of a background I'm not happy with that so I'm just going to wash that and <laughs> clean that away and then I think we can make that a bit darker in there like that good so that's a good start and now while that's drying now I'm going to move on to her face and here again I'm using Naples yellow I, I'm I don't know I think every artist has their the colors that they use and um, and it's probably I don't know why <laughs> why why is, is something you know either a teacher told you here you are these are the colors you're going to use and you never change um, or you do lots of experiments and sort of maybe you get go to a shop one day and you see this is some on sale some old stock on sale so you try something because it's cheap and you go oh I like that and I particularly remember with Naples Yellow um, came to an exhibition once and it was in Cambridge Library in in Cambridge in England where the university is the famous university and uh, and I went to art college there and um, and I went to the library one day and I'm not sure what I was invited to a, a kind of a, a an open you know the private view of somebody I didn't really know them I don't know I have no idea why I got invited. Anyway, <laughs> and they were showing their watercolours, and they were some um, watercolour paintings of local scenes, basically, and they were very much of Cambridge. And Cambridge is in the Fenland district of the United Kingdom, over in East Anglia, where there aren't many trees or hills or anything so it's kind of big wide open skies and I think East Anglia that's whenever I go there it's always like oh my goodness the skies and <laughs> you forget just how big the sky can be especially where I live now in a forest where you can just see what's what's in between the trees so uh yes yeah, and and so she had painted a a sunset or dawn I'm not sure looking over Cambridge rooftops and it was I don't know, it's probably not I don't think it was anything particularly special but I really really loved the sky and the sky was not blue <laughs> it was this lovely creamy color which I thought you know I just really recognized Oh, that's such a Cambridge kind of sky that creamy creamy kind of sunset dawn but the streaks of vermilion across it and I thought what is that what is that um, 
creamy colour. So I went and asked, I said, what, what, what colour paint are you using? They said, Naples yellow. So I, the next day I went to Heifer's, which was the art shop in Cambridge, and I bought myself Naples yellow. And I tried swooshing it across and dropping vermilion into it. And this is exactly what I've done here. <laughs> so this is a Cambridge sunset. <laughs> and, um, and so this is kind of my thing. And so I think Naples yellow has always been the color I use the most, I think, easily. Uh, especially since, I suppose, back in those days, I didn't really like drawing people. <laughs> Isn't that too difficult? Um, but as I got older and started sketching more and forcing myself to sketch more and forcing myself to draw people, then I found people are actually quite interesting to draw. Um, still hard, but but interesting. And so I find I use a lot of Naples yellow, which is um, obviously it's kind of part of the it's a kind of a base for a kind of white Caucasian skin, but strangely, I kind of use it also as a base for a sort of an Asian tan kind of skin and, and, and sometimes a much darker skin too, just building up, but using it as the base and building from it. Because however dark a face is, it isn't always just dark. There's lots of sort of shades in between. So, so particularly with watercolor, you want to start with the pale shades and then build up on top. Now I'm going to have a little bit of blue in the eyes here. Now you can't see anything at the moment so I'm just just kind of wetting it. Wetting the paper and I'm going to get a bit of blue. Into, oh that's too much so I'm going to have to now work that around like that. So I'm drying the brush and I'm just kind of pushing the paint around because I made it wet. So this is painting wet on wet. Made the paper wet first. And I'm just pushing the paint to where I want it to be. And then I think she's going to want a little bit of... A little bit of oh, pink on her lip there as well. Good. We are getting there. Now this box is, I thought long and hard about this. I thought, oh, should it be a really shiny silver box or a metal box with brass bands all over it? Not musical brass bands, but you know. And, um, and I thought, no, I think it should be really unassuming Pandora's box. And in fact, I've been, yeah, I was doing research on it earlier this year. And in fact, I do in my book, How to Draw Ancient Greek Stuff. Um, I did Pandora's box in that, but where the actual translation of Pandora's box from the ancient Greek is that is perhaps it's a, a pot. In fact, it's not necessarily a box. So I think it could be very humble but it's got the key in it, it's got a lock. <laughs> Which makes me think, yes, no, the lock's on the other side, yeah. So you can't see the lock. Um, and so this is a very simple pine kind of box. And I think we want it to be a little bit darker on our side here. Now, in fact, that the, um, Uh, the page, the, the bottom of the page is in fact going to be about like that. So, so all this stuff down here doesn't matter too much. And I'm going to put a little bit of ochre in there, I think. And I'm just going to spread it around a bit. And then. And I think maybe I'm just adding a bit of burnt umber now just to kind of warm it up a bit. <laughs> because I know it's going to be a book, 
there are some mistakes I don't worry about because I know I can fix those in Photoshop which is I suppose a bit of a cheat in some ways <laughs> but this is not artwork to hang on a wall this is this is working artwork to be um, to be turned into a book this, this is very much about the book it's about telling a story oh, I've gone over it there um, so I'm doing the eyes here and I'm painting them yellow leaving a little bit of white and again so this is kind of painting wet on wet and I'm kind of dropping in burnt umber here and there to give a bit of um, sort of moulding to the eyes of the cat the very worried cat who's thinking don't do it don't open the box which we as we're reading the story are of course all screaming to her as well but she knows better she thinks she knows better and she just wants to see what's inside because she's just very nosy <laughs> So uh, that's how it goes. Oh, there we are. And I'm going to make that a bit more. Oop, I need to push that up around there, actually. I think. So can you see that I'm kind of pushing the ink around the place, the, the, the ink, the paint. Um, there, that's looking pretty good. And now I'm going to want to do only a bit of blue. So I'm using French ultramarine and oh, not sure what green that is. I can't quite read. I remember. No, I can't remember. Anyway, it's a darkish green, and so I want to put this hairband in. I'll just work that across. like that and then I want it to be a little darker around here so I'm dropping more colour in at the end and also at, at the bottom so I'm letting it kind of drip to the bottom to give more colour there and that will give it a kind of a curviness to the whole thing <sighs> and then I think I need to dry it with my hair dryer Okay, I'm now going to start on the, the undercoat for the hair. And I've given her <laughs> this wild red hair. At the moment it's cadmium yellow deep probably, isn't it? It's cadmium yellow. And uh, so I'm making this kind of carrot carrot or orange really uh, because then that way she would really stand out basically why I did that you know a character I think a character is larger than life and so they've got to stand out in some way and although she's the only character there's her and the, there are only two get three characters there's um, Pandora and her cat who I call Plato Pandora and her cat that I call Plato because he's the wise one <laughs> and uh, oh and then there's a, a there's a, a lizard as well a gecko just sitting on the ceiling and um, so you know I'm not having, actually having to differentiate her against the other characters that's not a problem so I mean if you're doing a book with lots of characters like lots of human characters or you know a family of bears or you know, a family of raccoons or snakes or whatever um, then you obviously need to differentiate the characters from each other and that can be quite difficult uh, and you need to um, 
you need to work on that and it's you know it's not just clothes I think it's very easy just to turn them into humans wearing costumes um, obviously with yeah I mean if they are if you actually are drawing humans then that's a bit easier because you can <laughs> make them different people but uh, quite often in children's books particularly then animal characters they really are in a way humans dressed up as animals but you don't want them to quite look like that uh, well I don't know there are two ways of doing it they're either you know you're either doing a kind of a wildlife story in which case you know in which case you know they are animals and you're treating them as animals or or they're kind of like avatars human avatars in which case you kind of want to make them look human so you tend to give them clothes and things like that but if you're drawing them you know animal characters without clothes but you, oh you still got to differentiate sort of you know <laughs> mum from dad and the kids you know obviously size helps um but it's kind of little details but uh it's it's not not easy doing that so uh but in this case, then what I'm doing is I'm differentiating uh, Pandora from other picture books, I suppose, and other picture book characters. And I want you to think, oh yeah, Pandora, she's the one with the red hair, with a wild, <laughs> wild, <laughs> completely mad red hair. So now this is Cadmium Yellow Deep, which is really kind of carrot orange. But I'm not painting the whole of it, it's just kind of so and leaving leaving highlights in there. And again, this is painting while the undercoat is still wet, so you're getting this kind of wet on wet style undercoat. And it all kind of <laughs> comes together a bit later. I think that's the secret with watercolour. You don't just do one layer generally, it's usually, you know, you're building and building and building. Okay, we are having a heat wave here in England while I'm doing this. And uh, I would really like to have the fan on, but uh, it's um, going to be too noisy, I think. So actually I'm gonna I've got a little fan here, I might try that. Okay. I've got a little fan in there because otherwise I'm just gonna burn up. Um right, so we're gonna want a little bit of sort of shadow on her. Mm, shadow modelling really more, isn't it? Really, I suppose. Shadow and modelling. This is gonna be um, on her nighty, so I'm going to bring that like that, and then kind of around like that, and we need a bit, I think, in there, in the in this little <laughs> crooks and crevices. That'll do for the moment. And then again, I'm coming down here for the table again. I'm going to start with Naples yellow. And I now gone over the edge here, haven't I? But with a little bit of working, I think I can take most of that out there. That goes there. And a lot of where it's over the edge is going to be off the page anyway. And if, it, if it's really bad, as I say, I can fix it in Photoshop afterwards. So this, I do it. I haven't had to do much touching up in Photoshop on this book. Surprisingly, I thought I'd probably do a bit more than I have done. Um, and so now what I want to do is 
can make this quite a bit darker underneath. And again, I'm going to do this wet on wet to, to allow it to flow. Now I'm cleaning the brush and I'm just going to just kind of pull this and wash it into the rest of the painting here and I think still I can add some more under there like that and in fact I'm going to go back to some of this dark I'm going to make that a little bit darker underneath there and then bring that around like that. I think maybe when it's dry I'm going to make that a little bit more obvious but that's okay for the moment. Um, and here again I feel like I make this quite a bit darker. And as I say it's all about layering and building and uh, come around there and, and I'm constantly wetting the brush to clean it <laughs> so that I'm sort of pulling clean water up and leaving the darker bit below so I clean the brush and then I can kind of force it and spread it into those areas I think I want a bit more in there, so this is wet on wet again, and like that. And this is just playing with it, playing, 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 and and again, I think a lot of this is years of experience of just playing and playing and kind of knowing what the paint will do and where you want it to go. And I'm sure there are some kind of watercolor people watching this going, "What? <laughs> what is he doing?" and I'm just doing what I know basically and and I think everybody has their own funny little ways of doing things and and I think if you have funny little ways of doing things then that is where your kind of unique style comes from I think if everybody paints in exactly the same way then well you get exactly the same picture don't you <laughs> and that, I'm sorry to say that is what you frequently see and so you know particularly I know anime is very very popular and there are some people who are incredibly skilled at painting anime incredibly skilled I'm, I'm in awe of their skills and yet they uh, they all basically paint the same picture and because they're all following up oh, a pattern so and you will find that in so many things and so there are styles there's a, there's a watercolor style which I call classic English watercolor which I love and I just can't get my head around it and when I watch people paint it, it's just fabulous. And I think, whoa, and it's there. A lot of wet on wet painting the big skies and stuff. And whoosh, these colours flow and whoosh. <laughs> and I'm deeply envious. Think, oh, I wish I could paint like that. But then at times, then I think, well, I don't know if I do want to paint like that because in some ways, a, that classic English style that I would call classic English watercolour style um, it kind of I don't know you end up kind of looking like everybody else and it's very very difficult to get out of it and, and, and kind of put yourself in and I think if you're doing that classic style then it comes down to your vision and the what it is you're seeing and what it is you're painting whereas other people with their own particular kind of style can then paint anything and make it really really interesting because 
because it's their way of doing it and it's their own odd <laughs> peculiar way of doing it so um, I suppose some people watching me thinking that is weird and peculiar and some people would just flow flow a load of colour into that whereas I'm dib dabbing and, <laughs> and faffing about and just with a tiny brush some people would use a great big brush here and just flick it in there and I would watch them and I would be in awe that's not how I do it though um, um, I am always in awe of that kind of incredibly confident brushwork, watercolour brushwork you see some people do but that's not what I do and I suppose that's what makes me different and unique and I suppose and certainly as a professional illustrator <laughs> you want to be unique you want to have a, a recognizable style that people are gonna recognize instantly and go oh yeah that's him and but having said that you don't have to be a professional illustrator there's nobody forcing you you don't have to be a professional at all you don't even have to show anybody your work you are allowed just to sit in your bedroom and draw and paint just for your own fun just for your own meditative kind of reasons whatever just as a there's nothing quite like sitting quietly on your own painting a picture and I think that great big swooshing style um, I keep for my sketchbooks and I think that's where I have that a very different style and um, one that I really 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 want to develop and uh, and I will be developing more on this channel <sighs> this cat is really really difficult <laughs> so I'm painting him essentially in it's a colour called neutral tint and um, so in fact he has a little bit of a let me find another one here this is another piece of artwork in fact he has this um, bit of pale there but um, that's all hiding underneath <laughs> so right now I think I can switch to a now I think I can switch to a narrower brush and I'm going to start putting a pattern on here, a wooden pattern, that's too dark so I need to thin that down Oop. Um, and in fact I think I've got yeah it's getting this pattern and that's the right thing um, there. so we want to get the pattern of this thing it'll be kind of like that coming down there and then this will be something like that just to get that wooden pattern and then this is a wooden table as well so we want to get a pattern on here and so yeah what can I say I'm just doing a kind of wooden pattern and I suppose 
I really ought to be referring to how I've done this previously and making it look identical. But, um, somehow that just doesn't bother me. Um, that's just a kind of a first layer. Now I need to dry all this again. So out with my hairdryer. And now in fact I come back from making a cup of tea and I was thinking while I was making it uh, about a, a message I had from Lauren's Designs this week. Is that her main question is how do I go about making my art and pencil things into book format step by step? Should be easy enough, but I'm stuck. Please help. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's not, it's not easy. Yeah, that's not easy. And it's not something you can kind of teach in one go. I think that's, um, you know, I, th I think those are skills I've learned over the years through trial and error and, and, and just kind of doing things. And when I started, um, a book was quite easy in those days. <laughs> because of the technology and so um, all the type and everything like that was so expensive to set that uh, illustrators weren't allowed anywhere near it and so we were just sort of sent galley proofs and told you know here is a hole fill it draw a picture in there but now it's since first desktop publishing you remember that came along and um, you know computer you know <laughs> programs like InDesign and Quark and things like that since they came along and you can do the most in and Photoshop you know that you can do the most amazing things for for books and so book layout is is quite a complex thing and um, but as an illustrator so sometimes it, de it depends if you if you're writing your own book and illustrating it as I do um, then Wait a minute, I'm talking too much, I need to... Oop. I'm talking too much, I need to just dab some of that darkness out of there. Um, if you illustrate, if you write and illustrate your books as I do, then um, you're pretty much responsible for laying the book out yourself. Especially if you're... <laughs> If you're self-publishing as well, then, you know, as a self-publishing, you're responsible for everything, really. Um, but, you know, it's it's always different. It depends on your relationship with the publisher and everything, quite how it works out. So you might have a fantastic designer who has their own ideas. And if you do, then, for goodness sake, go with them. If you've got a really, really good designer working on your book with you, then you're very lucky and uh, make, absolutely make the most of them and their skills and knowledge and um, go with them. You know, you can always, if you feel that they're wrong about something, you can always sort of query it and say, well, what about doing it this way? And they might just might not have thought of it. You know, there's so many ways to do something. You can always tell a publisher you don't agree with something. And what about this? You always want to put up a... <laughs> Uh, a reasoned argument for wanting to change something and um, you know make it better but so where was I so well, yeah so I'm I think what I do is I, I basically I get a huge sheet of paper and draw lots of little boxes for the book and start from there just to get a kind of a feel for how the whole book looks and, and and you know how much text there is and how much white space there is and and then as you go through page by page it's you just got to kind of work out what each page is going to look like and <laughs> yeah it sounds so easy doesn't it and and again i think it's just it's something you have to work out and work out and work out thumbnails Thumbnail sketches is the key and just keep working at, at a small thumbnail size sketch size and you will get a feel for the, for the overall project. And, um, and you know where you've got high points and low points and where you want to do a lot of text or where you want to do 
hardly any text where you want to do a big full page thing sometimes particularly with picture books you've got technical things involved like you know the pages where you've got a full page spread and it's stitched down the middle and that means you can really do a beautiful full page spread there because you've got the whole page rather than it being cut and folded and shared with another page if you follow what I mean so there's sort of technical issues involved as well um, and basically basically it's a lot of drawing a lot of trying out ideas and a lot of drafts it's like writing a book you know you're not going to just sit down and pencil out a book first time it's just well, I suppose it could happen but <laughs> assume it's not going to happen um, you know you might just be flying and you know the f in a state of flow and it just works perfectly chances are that's not going to happen uh, and the chances are that you're going to have to do first <laughs> first draft and second draft and third draft and and each time you refine it and work your way through it and then when you've got lots of little pencil sketches and do thumbnails about that size and refine it so you kind of got a real feel for the book then start working on things a bit bigger still very rough rough pencil sketches um, to work it out and then and then eventually then you can kind of go to full-size pencils where you'll know exactly how big the text is going to be and where you need to fit in around it and things like that and that might be full fifth sixth eighteenth day draft <laughs> your writer has been through umpteen drafts there's no reason why the illustrator shouldn't go through umpteen drafts as well I think many illustrators um, it, it's, it, it comes down to experience doesn't it really and I suppose you know the more experienced you are then you know you, you just know oh I'm just going to do this I'm going to do that and as you read through a story you go oh yeah oh yeah and you just see the pictures in your head and that comes from experience and it comes from the experience of knowing I can do that you know that knowing that you're technically proficient enough to do what it is that you're intending to do and if you're not then you think I really want to have a go at that and then you've got to go off and work out how you can do it you've got to learn new techniques you know you might think oh that, I could do that in the software afterwards but I've got to learn how and, and, um, so there you are that's my advice Lauren Lauren I presume it's Lauren from Lauren's Designs so what am I doing here? Right, I think I'm kind of getting there. I need another blast of the hairdryer. Now I'm coming back to this cadmium deep yellow orange. And I'm going to be... So now this is painting dry. On, wet on dry rather. So it gets a slightly different sort of feel to it. And so you get a sharp edge to it rather than that wet on wet sort of whooshy <laughs> kind of blendingy kind of effect and yeah yes I just flick that off with my finger <laughs> yes uh, there are some things you can just sort of get away with and I suppose people are going to be asking about all the technical stuff here. So I'm using a, a watercolour paper. It's a hot pressed paper called CS2. Which, when I was at art college, <laughs> it was just the thing you used. And you used to get it on boards. And a CS2 fashion board they used to call it. And I think all the fashion designers used to use it and um and so it's quite smooth finished paper watercolor paper quite often has that kind of motley kind of deckly kind of texture to it which i don't really want i want a kind of a smooth finish and so cs2 does that but unfortunately you can't get it anymore 
the mill that used to make it closed down. I think that was kind of in the 80s recession or something, late 80s and early 90s recession or something. And um, and then one day I discovered there's a wonderful place in London, an art shop that I sometimes go to. And I was bemoaning to them about, saying, oh, CS2. They said, oh, we've got some downstairs. <laughs> and in their um, storeroom, they had several packs. So when I got home, I sent them an email and said, how much for a pack? And uh, I've forgotten what it was. It was not cheap. So I got a, an enormous pack with, I, I, think, I don't know, two or three hundred sheets in it. <laughs> Which was a lot of money to me at the time. But it was worth it. So I've been using this paper ever since. This is my very secret special supply. And I cut up, and I save every little piece of it. As I cut up big sheets. So... I think I need a little bit more somewhere around here like that. Just there and in there that can be a little bit more. And now this is what we have here is I'm going to do a very it needs to be paler than that I think it, I'm going to do this coming like that and like that. So this is going to be very pale flower stalks and we've got one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So this is a kind of recurring theme on the wall and I want this to be quite pale and not really imposing on the drawing too much. Just sort of there in the background and so we'll have something like that there. Oh, that's going a bit dark. Isn't it? And maybe another one there. And maybe something like that there. And then we want the flowers, and these are a kind of kind of tiger lily flower. So we want this kind of. It's a kind of a bird, <laughs> bird shape, I suppose. It sort of depends which angle you're looking at. So it's a kind of an M, kind of shape like that. And again, this is, these flowers have come from research of ancient Greece and Minoan culture I'm imagining I'm imagining that Pandora is part of the sort of Creighton Minoan culture and then we're gonna go one two three 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, uh, one, two, three. And then we want little blobs on the end as well. It's the thing about illustrators, I think, that you've got to be interested in stuff. Um, because, you know, I think a professional illustrator is just constantly being asked to draw different things. You'll tend to tend to be doing similar kind of things because because of your style, I suppose. But I've always sort of kind of. Well, I think one of the things I enjoy about illustrating is, is is that you're constantly researching and coming up with ideas and doing new things and discovering new things. And so you know, here it's about ancient Greece, and you've got to learn all these things to get it right. And now I'm back to the polychromos. Polychromos have been a bit of a, a revelation to me. And um, they're quite hard. And that's what I really like about them. 
there's I think you know nice really nice crayons as I call them <laughs> I was brought up with in my e in my day when I were when I were a lad that we called coloured pencils crayons and uh, so I just find it very difficult to remember to call them coloured pencils and if I've ever been working with a coloured pencil manufacturer a show or something like that they always kind of look at me when I call them crayons they give me that old fashioned look so um, yeah coloured pencils so polychromos um, what I I think illustrators and probably people who do colouring as well I think what you really prize is a is a soft pencil that just puts the colour down and um, but quite often that's a trade off and you get a sort of a crumbly pencil and, and if you press too hard Ugh, off they go crumbling away so um, and then if you've got a pencil that's hard enough to keep a point for a while then they're usually kind of just not soft enough to lay the colour down <laughs> so it's, it's uh, yeah there's, that was a bit of a trade off but polychrome or somehow seem to get it right and I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that I just tried lots of different things and these are the ones that I really like I should be sponsored shouldn't I so, but uh, I don't do enough work with colored pencils uh, this this is what I use colored pencils for is these kind of fine details at the end and so I could do I could do some of this with um with brush strokes probably but I think it's because I've used colour pencil to draw with underneath so that's actually having an effect on the paint as I'm painting and so now I'm having to kind of bring the colour pencils in at the end to um, tie the whole thing together if that makes any sense at all I'll show you in a minute. Right, and then now I go back to my darker pencil to start kind of sharpening up those bits. So I'll maybe sharpen up there and there. There's some things that just need a bit more definition. Uh, maybe and here I'm actually sort of adding a little bit of shade in there as well and these fingers need to be kind of brought back into definition now here in particular I want to kind of define the table against the cat probably sharpen up his whiskers a bit and I think I need to define the edge of the cat a bit as well and now I'm going to sharpen up the pencil point but I'm not going to sharpen it sharpen it because then that will make it too pointy and brittle so but here now I need to really define the eye there's a little something going on there but I'm thinking I can fix that in Photoshop oh no there and although he's a black cat and I'm, I'm not used any black paint nor black pencil or anything because oh, I think I've gone over there but again I can fix that in Photoshop um, black will just be will just punch a very big hole in the picture it'll be too dark um, and then I just need to just get that nose as well there 
I need to a little bit more around there. And then I'm going to get a brown. I'm just going to strengthen up these wood grain things and just fade them out. But just to put them more into the, um, the shadow. Make them more defined within the shadow there. And again, I can probably do something like that too. And there we go. I am going to call that it. And why you call something it, I don't know. There's just a kind of a feeling that I'm just going to fiddle a bit more with some orange there. Uh, I think it's just a feeling that if you do any more, you are going to completely <laughs> mess it up. And something's telling me to try and find a little bit of a darker green. There we go. So I'm, mm, one last look and I kind of thought, hmm, not happy with that yet. And I'm going to do that and then a bit more in here. So that will be darker there and then like that. There we go. Good. A little robin has just appeared at my window hmm. well i hope you enjoyed that and if you did did you know if you join me on patreon you get it without adverts <laughs> well in the meantime keep drawing 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 practice 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 and i'll see you next time you take care now bye bye <laughs>